grapes are already they're very healthy this year. Doing their thing. This is a really good example right here of our vines. We have what's called a bilateral cordon system where the cordons stretch out in, in either direction off of the trunk. And then the fruit zone resides right near the cordon here. Okay. The first uh, cluster starts to form here. And as they start to weigh down, they'll, they'll develop right about here. They'll start going through verasion in the next two months where the green grapes and start turning to the red do. grapes. Oh. This is actually Merlot. This is what we're known for. So where did this aha moment come from in you to create Sunstone Winery, which is one of the most beautiful wineries in the world? And I've been around the world, so I have to compliment you. Oh, thank you all. Stunning. I've been uh, got into the wine business to grow grapes. I've the lifestyle of wine and food. And my parents fell in love with the concept of not crushed our first grapes. harvest from our own vineyard, and we were we were hooked from that point forward. And ever since then, we've been making wines from our property and growing grapes organically. And uh, I just love winemaking. Fermenting wine is fun. My favorite part is tasting it with other people, enjoying food with with people, and and really experiencing wine for what wine's meant to be. But there are many places you could have settled. Uh, we certainly know that Napa is one of the burgeoning areas for wineries in the state yeah. of California. What was it about Santa Ynez that made you really dig your heels into the soil and do this? Well, it's so close to Santa Barbara where I was born and raised and uh, we automatically had natural connections to the local community up here. When Fess Parker started his winery oh, up right, here, my parents right. were friends with the Parkers. and. Uh, his viticulturist actually came out and inspected our property and said, hey, this would be an ideal uh, location for growing Merlot and Cabernet Franc and Cabernet Sauvignon. So really, the community is what drew, drew us to this location, and so much of what we've done along the way has been through really community type here. But what you did, which is what I find so extraordinary in this industry, which is, you know, so competitive, uh, is you decided to do this organically and receive a CCOF, Certified California Organic, you know, standard certification for sustainability and for soil, and yet you produce a grape that can compare and even be better than those that aren't doing CCOF. Congratulations. Oh, thank I'll you. Drink to thank that. Thank you very much. Really. Now, that's an arduous task. You know what, it's a, it's a passion that started with my mom's reading Silent Spring back in the 60s Rachel and 70s. Carson, right? She really fell in love with the concept that if we're going to live on the land and grow a product out of the earth, that we need to be stewards of the land and be responsible. So it's really more of a family philosophy than a, than a corporate mission. Right. For us, it, it's not even really so much marketed on our bottles as much as it is that if someone actually cares to ask. Uh, we let them know that we grow our grapes organically, and that's a result of my mom's vision and her passion for, for environmentalism, which I now carry with me, and I plan to educate my kids about it.